you're amongst many things, a jujitsu black belt. One of the things that people are really curious about, white belts and blue belts in jujitsu, but also people who haven't tried the art, is what does it take to be a jujitsu black belt? I think that, you know, everyone's journey is a little bit different, but the one thing that the, what is it, Calvin Coolidge quote, you know, determination, persistence is the only thing that, that will win in the end. It will always win in the end. Not brilliance, not toughness, not education, it's, it's persistence. And I think that having the belief that no matter what happens to me, I will proceed forward and I will, I will figure out how to make this happen, hell or high water, I think is the one thing that ties together all of the people that I've ever met that made it through whatever it was that they were going through. Because, you know, sometimes you can get lucky and you can have an easy time or, and that luck could be, you had a good situation. It could be, I mean, like uh, in the obvious sense of like where you're living, where you're training, what's going on, you had a good situation, you're un unbelievably athletic. Oh, you're a, you're going to be an astronaut. You're brilliant and, and an Olympic athlete, you know, like, yeah. well, that's a fantastic situation. You know, you won the genetic lottery and I'm sure you've worked hard as well, but you also won the genetic lottery. It's a, uh, determination is the one thing though because that person could have a very easy go of it initially and then tear their knee and then they're no longer the the superhuman physical specimen that they were the only thing that will keep them going is persistence and i think that that um i would just say that persistence i say i'll just put one foot in front of the other and sometimes i can see the path ahead and sometimes it's beyond my vision but i will not stop i may even slow down but I won't stop. And that's the only thing that I can say that I've seen tie everyone together because there's so many ways to the top of any mountain and there's so many different personalities and skills and backgrounds involved, but everyone, everyone carries on. So at the core, the foundational advice is just don't quit, just keep going. That's the lesson of martial arts, I think. You know, we think it's like how to be strong or how to be, how to win. But in reality, it's like how to persist, how to endure because it's, all of us have been beaten so many times and gotten beaten up so many times and thought about quitting. Have I ever thought about quitting? Absolutely. Have I ever quit? Never. I will never, ever quit. Ever. I can say that. You might knock me out. I will be damned if I quit. What's the darkest moment? Is it injury related? Like, is it, is it, uh, so like to me, like two possibilities, I've fortunately never been seriously injured, but I think that's a dark place to be, like having to be out for many months uh, for, um, as Jen was saying, like with a head injury, especially like the uncertainty, that's one. And then the other side is if you have big ambitions as a competitor, realizing that you're not as good, like th those, those doubts were like, I kind of suck. How am I supposed to be a world, the greatest fighter of all time? If I, if, if like, several people in the gym are kicking my ass. Those are the two things that paralyze you. I think that everyone's darkest moment is maybe different. Looking from the outside for Ryan, I wouldn't say that his, he's had injuries and he's had bad ones. I wouldn't say that was his darkest moment. I think for me, I would say some of my head injury was my darkest moment. Um, absolutely, and I've torn my ACL twice. I've torn my shoulders four times. I've had lots of surgeries. Um, for me, the orthopedic injuries were not the most difficult. It was the brain injury. For others, that might be the case for them. Maybe they've never experienced a, an injury, and maybe for them, that's their darkest moment. From the outside, obviously, Ryan can speak to this more, but for Ryan, I think it was the um, inability to to perform at certain points, to the opportunity the missing of opportunities that for him, from my perspective, watching him go through and having seen various points of his growth from, from early purple belt on, I think the hardest time for him looking in obviously was uh, when he would hit moments where he wasn't able to perform for various reasons. He couldn't get fights. He, he was having difficulties there. I think that that was the hardest point for him. Did you, did you think like with a head injury that you might not never be able to do jujitsu again? Yeah, I mean, I, I, mine was very, um, was really bad and it was just the one hit, but I had a looping memories for seven months, didn't know it because when your brain's messed up, you're not even aware that you're looping. Um, and so, uh, 
I saw two different neurologists. I find like it took a very long time. Um, I didn't know if I was going to be able to have like linear thoughts or read a book. I didn't know at certain points if I could listen to music again, you know, without it making my head hurt. Um, and so uh, it was almost two years before I woke up in the morning without a headache, um, just waking up before I even start my day. And so that. So that's even bigger than jujitsu. That's just life. That's just, that's just hard. And I think that you can experience so many things. I've had all these injuries. Um, we lost a baby when I was 15, 15 weeks. And um, we've had all these experiences. And what the hardest point for me, not saying that all of those things weren't hard, but it's kind of like, as you go through these, you just realize like life goes on and you have to keep working at it and you have to keep going. And you asked me earlier offline, did I feel depressed? And I, not for my head injury. I don't think that at least in the moment I had a any recognition of that. It's kind of like, but I think different people's personalities, I have kind of the like buckle down and just keep going. And, and sometimes it's not until lots of time later that you realize, wow, that was really hard because you're just struggling to live and, and function and, and do the things that you need to do along the path. Do you mind path. jumping on just like oh. this part of the conversation I'm just sorry, for a few minutes? I'm sorry, over do you, do you mind, you know, just sitting together? Oh, not at all. Here. Just for a little bit. Sorry it'd be about cool that. I didn't mean if, to jump It'd be in cool here. if we put a face to it, you know? <laughs> uh, is, is it okay with you? Yeah, it's fine okay. with me. It's fine with you. By the way, what was the head injury, if you don't mind sharing? Someone hit their, had dropped their knee on the back of my head during training, who's a lot bigger than me. So one strike to the back of the head is too much for someone. There's a reason that's outlawed in MMA, right? Someone 50 pounds heavier than you drops their knee on the back of your head once and it's... That's the funny thing about getting hit, right? You never can really be sure what's going to happen. I think that's actually one of the magical parts about jujitsu, where like if you choke me, if you... We know what's going to occur. You hit someone, they might be completely unharmed. Like you might be punching Tony Ferguson in the face and like he, you need to hit him with a sledgehammer to affect this man. And then other people, they could get really badly hurt, which I guess mm -hmm. it's back to your point about, you know, street fighting and things like that and the serious, serious potential, you know, second, third order consequences of any action that we take. But yeah, that's a that's a tricky thing about getting hit. How does it make you feel that, like the, the really shitty thing about injuries to me was that like, you start thinking like, well, if I did this one little thing different, like this wouldn't have happened today. Like one, mm -hmm. one moment changes your entire life. Is that, do you, uh, do you think that way or is that totally counterproductive? Um, you can't help but think that way when you've had the amount of injuries I've had. Now, because I've had more than my, most people's fair share. Um, as my orthopedic says, you don't want to win that. You don't want to win the contest of who's had the most. But since you surgeries. have, but, you're building me a pool. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think you can't help but think that way sometimes, but I definitely don't think it's, I think it can be facilitated if you don't beat yourself up too much. Um, because thinking about why have I been subject to so many injuries and, and a lot of it comes to just, um, almost all of mine in particular are people a lot heavier than me. So we're I, but if I've been training martial arts 15 years, I'm obviously on the much smaller side. I'm a woman. I've done thousands and thousands of rounds with people 50 pounds plus heavier than me. I mean, years not training with anyone less than 50 pounds, which is 50 pounds is almost half my body weight. And when you also add testosterone and the natural um, physiological advantages of men, not just are they heavier with more mass, they're faster, they're more explosive, they're stronger, um, if they're the same size. And so I think that the willingness to, to be in that environment over and over and over again creates a lot of strength, resiliency, willingness to continue. But it also like in order to do that, you almost have to, uh, for me, the way I was approaching it was like pretend like I wasn't more vulnerable um, and just be willing to step in and step in and step Fake in. Fake it until in. you make it kind Fake of thing. Fake it until you make it kind <laughs> of, yeah. Like I'll just one day I'll be strong enough. And, and you avoided injury for most, for most for of For most of those rounds I avoid injury. The problem as Ryan points out is that like you could do thousands of rounds, but if one person that size, that strength, that hover reacts in a way that you don't expect, it doesn't, it's not like an oops, it's like always major. Do you regret any of it? Like I think that most, no one I know has experienced the degree of injuries that I've experienced. And I started just at a time when 
uh, in 2005 is very different than now, where you yes. have the coaches have more control over what you're doing. They're more aware in general about a lot of the injuries. There's a lot more people who are uh, hobbyists than when I started. Uh, I mean, they were hobbyists, but it was different kind of hobbyists, you know, than now. Um, now our girls can train with other girls. They don't have to do thousands of rounds with somebody significantly more powerful than them. Um, and um, for the, the drawbacks and the benefits of that, you know, as with anything. Um, so I think, I think that I don't think I would go back and change it. There were times after one of my injuries where I said to Ryan, I said, I quit, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. I probably said it more than once, but there was one time I was really serious in 2012. Um, I was really serious. I had tore my shoulder. I had, I was looking at missing a big competition again in the world for two, my second or third year in a row after injuries. And I said, I'd quit my job two years before. And I'm like, I'm done. And Ryan, before that had always been, you know, you keep you focused. And then he kind of said, okay, if you want to be done, be done. Just just have a good time. And I'm, no, I'm, I'm really done. I don't even want to train anymore. Okay. Okay. And then, you know, I think he helped facilitate a moment for me to go, um, visit a friend, some friends, some girls that were doing a, a girls camp who are close to my size or some friends of mine to go train. And I was like, Oh wait, I do love this thing. It's yeah, just you, harder for me on yeah. a daily basis, but that doesn't mean I don't love this thing. And it really helped change my mind. I started to connect with some other people, travel more myself um, because previously he had done that, but I hadn't really done that. I think there was a point where um, when I started jiu-jitsu, it was just for fun. I just wanted to sport after college. I played sports as a kid. I want to. I just wanted to exercise. I wasn't into the martial arts. He used to give me a hard time about it because he was always very, how can you not care about martial arts? Yeah. I don't know. I just want to play sports. Yeah. Um, and Ryan was really big into kind of the philo philosophy side of the martial arts aspect. Um, he used to give me a hard time. And I think after that moment, this moment where I looked at myself and I said, do I want to keep doing this, is when I started to appreciate jujitsu. Take It took off some of the pressure I'd been feeling, I think, as Ryan's girlfriend. But I had a full-time job a long time. It was never my goal to be a jujitsu world champion. And I think after that moment where I looked, well, you know, I really do like this. I really do want to keep this. I had this moment, like any time where you're like, I'm doing this for me. I'm not doing this for him. And I think that that's... Um, I think that that was really lucky for me because how often in our lives do we have a kind of a challenge where we have to stop and we have to say, is this really what I want? Yeah. How often in a relationship do you do that? How often in any type of lifestyle or job do you stop and do you really ask yourself, is something really difficult happen that you look and you go, am I just doing this because it's convenient and easy or is this what I really want to do? Yeah, I've had those moments. Like this, this podcast is one of those things is like, you you stop and, you, and think like I actually love this, <laughs> and it's uh, I had that with jujitsu too. I I don't think I had sat until like brown belt that I stop. I mean, yeah, it's when you first face real challenges, you think like, why am I doing this? It's I think most of my progression was why not? I think that's the right the leap of faith, right. and then at a certain point you think like. What, why am I doing this? And if you can answer honestly that because I love it, it's kind of a liberating feeling. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's so, it's so powerful. It's well, an you feel acceptance. thankful for the opportunity to be there, right? Because you love it and you yeah. go, man, I, if yeah, it's great it gratitude. From, it's, right. yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's ultimately gratitude. Yeah. Let me ask you this. So Ryan said, like, what, what, what is it? I took it? over your thing. Yeah, no, just, no, no, nobody cares about Ryan. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'll, I'll Photoshop him out or whatever. However, you had to do that, be great. Just put Sean Connery's head. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just like a Dune ad. Over exactly. Here. Uh, Sean uh, Connery, I could, I could get down Sean. that. Is that the sexiest man in, in uh, Sean Connery? In the Dune universe? That's my understanding. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think in any universe. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ryan Gosling and given. We actually named our son after Sean Connery. Oh, yeah. That's right. We did. Five notion of yes, oh, we yes. did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was in The Rock. That was, I, I love all those. Oh, those are great. Lame. <laughs> Nicholas Cage. Cage oh, yeah. Con Air is probably Face the off? greatest movie of all time. Oh, Con, dude, his accent in Con Air was so yeah. awesome. <laughs> I don't know where it's from. Alabama, I guess, or something. I love that, that they got pair. like Steve Buscemi in there. They're like, yeah. we need Steve Buscemi in this thing. <laughs> and we got him. Dave Chappelle? Like, yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. He's a prisoner in there. Eight ball. That's right. Yep, greatest movie of all time. Should have won an Oscar. Dave Chappelle also in Blue Streak with Martin Lawrence. 
And then, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Robin Hood Men and Tights? Oh, Robin Hood oh, Men and Tights was right, one of my is. favorites yeah. as a kid. Half baked. But Rob, Rob yeah, well, that, that's a good. That's a uh, wow. We just listed off some really bad 90s movies, but. <laughs> you take but that the, back. <laughs> we're telling our age. <laughs> yeah, it's all about uh, Speak yourself. <laughs> so, what, um, like, in your view, I don't mean to, from a, like a smaller person, I guess, that's an interesting thing about Jiu Jitsu is like, that uh, small. I don't. I, I hope. Hopefully, that's not a bad thing. Um, Elf. <laughs> and, Elves are taller. I've, yeah. Like with all these like uh, bigger people, you can still enjoy the art. Like, what does it take to get a black belt to excel to, quote unquote, master the art? Gosh, everyone has such a different path. Ryan's promoted uh, six, seven people, Some, something like that, and I think about half of them have had. Um, have kids, have families, have other careers. Um, at the time, some of them competed a lot. Some of them have never competed or rarely competed. Some haven't competed in a long time. Um, some had started different places. They, everyone's had different journeys, uh, even in our own little group of seven. Um, I think only, maybe only two or three were, were high-level competitors of that group um, at the higher belts, right, like brown black maybe um and so it's just different for every person and that's something that that you know we try to tell her since we have 400 students and um do we have a we don't really have anyone who's you know a stated other other than like the coaches like adam but we don't have anyone that's like a stated high level competitor as a student at the moment we people look at our gym like oh it's lots of competitors it's not lots of competitors it's never been lots of competitors and um, we've had ones and twos here and there um but really everybody's in it for the long term if they're in it sometimes the the high level competitors are the ones that are more likely to drop off because they have a bit of success particularly at at blue or purple and then they realize how hard it is at brown and black and then they they have a hard time continuing on that that path and then they can't look at themselves as a non competitor they have a hard time continuing with jiu jitsu i think whereas sometimes it's the guy who comes in as a white belt and he trains you know, twice a week, every week. And the next thing you know, he's been there for two or three years. Like, oh, he's a blue belt. He's a purple belt. He's a brown belt. And and he's just consistent um, over over a long period of time and willing to, to take the path. And no two people's path is exactly the same. No two people's lives are exactly the same. You have, um, we have students who started as a white belt as a, you know, a young adult with no, you know, no responsibilities and they train all the time. And then they, have a job, or, you know, then they graduate college, then they have a job, then they have married, then they have kids, then they have different points in their careers and at different points in your life, jujitsu will be there, you know, for whatever way that you're willing to accept it. It's place, I think. Well, that's actually kind of what, back to the initial question we discussed about, you know, what makes a warrior, <clears throat> you know, and, and also like what makes something or someone, you know, particularly impressive in my mind is like uh, what they make out of what they have. Um, you know, one of my favorite movies ever is Forrest Gump, and it's obviously it's it, it's just if you can't because uh, I've heard people like, oh, Forrest Gump sucks. I'm like, I don't like you as a person, and uh, <laughs> like you have no heart at all. <laughs> but basically, uh, it, it's the story of someone that tries hard, and it's like, yeah, the, the, but it's it's a funny movie. But it's like, um, you know, I guess you, you meet each person where they are, you know, and obviously you want, everyone needs to be pushed. We all need to be pushed. We need friends and people around us that push us to be better versions of ourselves all the time. And, and as you mentioned, the people you spend all of your time around deeply impact you. Um, and we have to be willing to be pushed. It takes a leap of faith for me to trust, for me to put some of my self in my, my, you know, I guess my ability, my control, my personal agency, as it were, in the hands of someone else that I that I trust and and that I respect. But if if I can do that, well, again, maybe I never become you know high level black belt competitor. But you know, I had four of the things I was doing in my life. I also have a family. I have this. I have that. You know, what that person was able to accomplish in the martial arts relative to what they were able to put in is phenomenal. You know, other times someone could be a very successful black belt and in my mind be a bum because they could have been a lot more and you know they could have done more they could have focused more and in, there's no shame in deciding that you don't want to do that but whatever it is that you're you're invested in i remember the uh take it uneasy podcast and that i, I loved because 
You know, I'll just chill out. I like resting. It's like vacation. Oh, who wants to go on vacation? Yeah, I'll go on vacation for a day or two. You want to spend three weeks on vacation? Like, I kill myself. Like, get me out of here. Like, this is horrible. <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm a waste of life. I'm not doing anything useful. I You're technically vacation. on vacation right now. Right. Well, this is yeah. fun though. This but is if, like a one day vacation. Uh, yeah, exactly. But if, you know, if you had to, I would, I'm sure you're thinking about jumping off of the building right now. But if you had to, if you had to talk to me for, you know, like uh, three days, I'm sure you'd, you'd probably shut me off the building. I don't blame you. I'll be dead. People, but, yeah. <laughs> five hours in. But, but yeah, but you know, it is, it's like you want to be pushing towards something um because otherwise what's the purpose of being here you know it's not just a college it, it's doing something useful building growing as a person helping others do the same if that's within your power at any given time but i think that's kind of the neat thing about martial arts is it can be many many different things to many different people you know i finally for instance was able to get a college degree le- this this year that which i mean it's not a big deal for most people but for me it was a big deal because i was you went back and finish yeah and i never envisioned ever going back and you that's know, a hard step to, to to go back and finish that's yeah. uh it, 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 it was, weighs heavy on you if you don't it's yeah. interesting yeah i was just i was more proud of that than most things i've ever yeah. done if i'm honest you know and, and it was neat and i really enjoyed it and it was the process of doing it but you know it, are my academic credentials impressive like not in the least but for me, it's like it was a big deal for me personally to take that step and to to go back and do that. And I was I was proud of the the direction, and because it would have been easy. Like, do I need to do it? I'm like, no, I'm you know I have business. I'll do okay. I'll try. I'll keep fighting. But I w- I was happy to take the time in between fights when I was when I would was unbooked for an opponent to do something productive rather than just I'll just hang out. You know, like I can still train every single day, but I can also train and go to school. People go to the Olympics while going to school. I can I can do <laughs> martial arts and, and go to school.